you see here I have a pane of glass on top of this uh, table here. And that's kind of important because it's a nice smooth surface that you can easily wipe. Anything with porous, like if I was just using this table, would be a, you wouldn't get such a clean surface. So here I have the pressure cooker that uh, we cooked actually last night. I let cool down overnight. We're going to take our still wet with alcohol paper towel and wipe down the front room of it, the side that's facing the flow hood. All right, you want to liberally Oh, you know, here, here, okay, we're good. We're gonna liberally uh, wipe our hands with alcohol. And I just kind of grab here with one hand. And we'll take two jars out at a time to work with it. Notice how I'm tilting the lid back, letting the air come in and around so uh, no outside air can really get in. I'm gonna go ahead and close that back up. Set it on the ground as long as it's closed up. Make sure we wipe the area clean again. Now, there's a whole bunch of varieties of ways we can inoculate this liquid culture. One way would be to have a spore syringe, like a, a large syringe you would get here. Only I'm using this for different purposes. Another, another uh, possibility would be a culture syringe, which would just be a, an already germinated spore a culture inside a, a test tube, or a syringe, excuse me. And uh, another way, too, that we're going to do today is uh, a slice off some agar culture from a petri dish. You see in here. The easiest way that you're going to start off doing, because obviously I'm going to have to have another video on how to do this, is uh, getting a spore syringe or a culture syringe. And either one will work, although the culture syringe will be faster. And you can eventually make your own culture syringes if you want to. It's one way to back up your culture. And just, uh, you would take one of these syringes and sterilize it in the pressure cooker with a cap on it, covered in foil, so it uh, kind of protects it when you take it out. And then you would wait for it to cool down. And uh, once you had one of these uh, fully colonized, you could reach in there, you know, tilt the jar up and suck up a syringe full of liquid culture, recap it, and you can set that in your fridge for a long period of time. So, what we're going to do right now is inoculate these jars, or at least one of these jars, with some already grown out on an agar dish of king oyster mycelium. Again, we're going to get our hands nice and liberally Wiped with alcohol. I want to make sure I have my bag open here towards the flow, towards the flow hood because I've been uh, reusing this bag and it kind of creates an extra clean environment on the inside. We're going to take these two out and go ahead and uh, flip the top of the bag over again and wrap her up. Find a clip. Now we can set it to our side. Wipe the table down again where you have that bag. Again, always with the alcohol, you're going to have plenty of rubbing alcohol on you. It's also another good reason to have a positive pressure system in your room that the air is getting blown out because if it's in the summertime and it's warm in here and you're using a lot of alcohol, it starts getting uh, pretty uh, fumy hard to breathe. So we see we have two dishes of king oyster mycelium. Now we're not we're only going to use one of these dishes because it's more than plenty. You can see here the agar medium which is uh, yeast, the same dextrose, and then uh, an agar uh, powder that we'll get into later. Where I've taken a a small piece of a master culture slant, put it in the center of this dish, and it grew out from the center. And you can see it's pretty much totally engulfed the entire inside. It's actually crawling up the very outside rim of it. That's pretty much as uh, 
as much as you want it to grow. Otherwise, what will happen, it'll actually start growing up over itself onto the lid. And once it eats up all the, uh, the agar inside the dish, it'll start to die off. But it'll still take a while before it gets to that. But here it's nice, nice and thick. So once we put it in the uh, liquid cultures, it's really going to take off. So we're going to need an alcohol lamp. Take a lid off it because we don't have much in it. Some denatured alcohol, ethyl alcohol. Now you don't want to use isopropyl in your lamp. It'll uh, It'll leave a lot of black, you know, uh, sootiness, and it won't burn as hot as just using denatured alcohol. And it's really not any more expensive. Plus, I like the smell of it. Kind of like ladies' uh, nail polish remover. That's actually a little mush. You only want to fill your alcohol lamp halfway. Never more really. Because you can run the risk of tipping it over when you uh, are moving your hands around and the more it has in it the more chance of it that's going to come out the tip. But this one seals up pretty good. I'll show you where you can get this exact same one. Um, if, this, if the inside was very dry I would actually tip it over to kind of force some of the fluid up into it. But it's already pretty wet. So I'm going to take my already still damp uh, paper towel with alcohol. We're going to clean the outside of this lamp because it is going to get into the flow hood area. And we're going to let that dry off for a minute. Because if we ignited it right now, there'd be so many fumes of uh, the uh, isopropyl alcohol, it would catch fire and that would be a mess. All right. Let's see, we have a lighter. You see here I have a, uh, a certain type of scalpel. This one kind of has like a, uh, a spade tip to it. And it's kind of fat. I don't know if you can tell. Um, you can choose to either use this type or the type that has a, a large, flat, thin blade to it, which is actually better for reaching into things. It has a longer handle usually. I like these types because that it has the incline in it when you go to cut out a little wedge of uh, mycelium out of the dish to tr make transfers. The, you can push underneath of it and the wedginess of it kind of slides the piece up on top of it. But uh, I'll show you what I mean later. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, move anything flammable away from this lamp. Make sure we don't have any wet alcohol on our fingers or on the lighter. We want to let that all dry off. And we can go ahead and light it. And it'll take a few seconds for the, uh, the flame to really rise up. You can see I only have the wick just, just a hair above the, uh, the top of the opening. You don't want it much farther than that or the flyer will be way too high. It'll start getting dangerous. You might pass your hand over it. Now this is all going to take some skill in the sense that you're going to want to start off slow, especially to make sure you don't burn yourself on the lamp, and that you're not dropping your culture when you're doing transfers. You're able to hold on to a lid and drop it in. It's going to take some motor coordination and some practice. So don't feel bad if you drop a few wedges on the table at first. That's why uh, that's why I have you know two full dishes here. You know, plenty of room for error. All right, this is about as high as we want it. So I'm going to put it right on the perimeter, just right on the edge. It'll be enough that the flame's getting blown back, but not so much that it uh, won't heat up the scalpel. It's actually kind of cold in here, so fire's not so high. So that's good. All right. Over here, away from the flame, we're going to wet my paper towel again, gently, wipe your hands, everything gently because we don't want any splashing of alcohol. And uh, well, first, you know, we're going to 
go ahead and take the foil off these, or at least one of them. Set this other to the side. Now you always want to think about the path of air coming down in your flow hood. Because say I'm going to work right here, well you know you're going to have this blocking the way and the air is going to go around it. You're not going to get such of a, uh, a clean area, of fast moving air. You might have some air that eddies in, uh, some contaminant off your fingers. You see I'm wearing gloves. If you don't have hairy hands like I do, uh, you can go ahead and just use bare hands. But uh, I like gloves. I've, I've used them the entire time. I've been doing this. No problem. So now we have one jar with the uh, foil off. And we're going to go ahead and unscrew it. It might be tight, so you might, you might have to use some, uh, some uh, arm muscle there to really get a grip of it. We're going to unscrew it all the way till it's loose and just, you know, sitting on there loose. That way we can just pick it up. Again, wipe your hands down a little bit. We're going to take the outside of our culture on the dish. We're going to wipe it down. You see I have what's called parafilm around it. Peel that off. That's to add some extra layer of protection there. I wipe it again just to be sure. And set that down. Again, make sure there's a clear path to your jar and a clear path of air to your uh, culture on the dish. I'm going to reach over here, grab my scalpel. I'm going to wipe it down from the tip to the bottom, nice and good, with alcohol. And then I'm going to sit back and let the alcohol evaporate. It'll only take about, oh, 20 seconds to get that. Flowing air takes it away pretty fast. Also, I like to take the piece of paper towel while well, you're not using it and kind of press it down onto the glass to kind of give it an anchor so that when you're messing with this dish, see how it bumps up against it and doesn't want to slide around so much. All right, we're going to go ahead and heat the scalpel up. I usually heat it up a little bit underneath the tip just to give it a little bit of sterilization there. And then you really want to get the tip hot, real hot. If you had one of the flat style scalpels that was thin, you would actually want to get it to the point where it is turning red hot. Once the scalpel does get uh, warmed up in between doing a whole lot of transfers. You don't have to really hold it over the flame as much. It won't take as much to heat up. Alright, that should be good. Now while it's still hot, one hand, now I'm left handed too so you might want to rearrange everything on the other side totally opposite to this, okay? Um, I might even make a video where it's, you know, flipped over so you have a good respect of what it's like to be a right-hander. One hand with a one finger on the dish like that and one finger on the top, one finger on the bottom and you carefully lift it up. And notice how I'm holding it where the dish is open so the air is coming and hitting the inside of it. None of my fingers are towards the inside of the dish. And uh, we're just going to reach down here start at the center and slice the wedge out. Then I like to get underneath of it and kind of flip it up and kind of free it from the bottom a little bit. Then you come in it, kind of coming at an angle, slice it in the center and with the hopefully, hopefully it gets on there, it doesn't peel off or break off. You're gonna put the lid back on well, I still have this not by the fire, but still in the uh, path of clean air. Again, you reach up here and slide the lid back. Notice how I'm sliding it back so this lid doesn't fall out. 